Hi, this is Mike Ruane of Revelation Software, and today we're going to talk about making a browser based report using Open Insights O4W and TigerLogic's D3 data source. It's a relatively simple process to do. We make the presumption that you already have your O4W configured to run correctly on your machine, and then you simply choose that you're going to run a report, you walk through the creating of it, and then you save it, and then you can run it at your will. There are basically uh, four steps that you need to do to create this O4W report. First, you want to choose your general options, such as how many lines per page, whether or not you want to use zebra striping, which data table you want to go against, go against, options like that. Next, you would choose which fields you're going to search on, which fields you're going to sort on, and which columns you're going to actually have displayed in the report. Next, you can modify the select criteria and the search criteria, so you can get your ascending or descending sorts. Uh, and then finally, you would modify your report layout setting things like colors, fonts, uh, break-ons, subtotals, information like that. It's a relatively simple process to do. You don't need to write any code, but you can if you would like. And The code is the simple basic code that you're all familiar with and like to work with. So why don't we go right into the tool right now and take a look at creating a report using O4W against a D3 data source. Okay, so here we are in the browser and I already have a tab set up for the O4W workspace and this is what the developer sees when they log into O4W to make a browser based application. Here at Revelation we have the philosophy that most of the applications that we see on the web are pretty much going to be forms, whether they're data entry or read only, reports, and some dashboards. They'll be held together with menus and there will be some procedures that support them and you also have maintenance that you're going to need to do with tables or applications and users and permissions and the like. So what we're going to do is that we're going to create a uh, brand new report. So we'll go to Create and Modify Report. And the first thing that's going to happen is that we're going to be prompted to log in. And O4W has a default login of O4W. And the password is the same, so I'll log into O4W. Um, and I'm going to create the name of a new report, and I will call this uh, D3. And we'll go D3 underscore cust. How about that? And we'll go on to next. And once I'm in here, I'm going to enter a description for the report. And this is the first part, the layout. So the description for this report, I'll call it a customer uh, listing. And the table that I'm going to use is the customers table, which is part of the tutorial data set that we did with D3 earlier. For the title, I'll put a customer by state. Uh, my HTML template, which is the general look of the form, like we have this graphic upside and then the menus down here, they can be based upon uh, yours or your client's web pages, so I'm going to stick with the default right now. I'm not going to put in a background image, nor am I going to put in a header or a footer. If I needed to run a procedure on the server before I ran the report, either for running before the report or for reading, I could put the names of those procedures in there now. Uh, the number of lines per page when the report displays, I'll limit that to 15. Uh, if this report happens to get called as a pop-up, the user uses it in the future for some sort of lookup, I'll limit that to 10 lines. I could zebra stripe the report, but because I'm going to do some colorization on some break-ons, uh, I am not going to do that. Uh, displaying the menu on the page, we have a number of default menus, but I will not display any in this report. Nor do I care about report permissions. Uh, Open Insight ships with a default of about seven different permissions and you can assign them to users and you know limit the access of the users to the different reports and screens and such. Uh, but I'm going to have no limitations on this one. I do, however, want to show the record count first. So I'll say yes, I'd like to see the record count. Uh, we're not using the pop-up, so we're going to skip this. I could set the background color or a foreground color or a link or visit a link color using one of our color pickers here, but I won't. You can if you want to. My default report alignment will be to the left. I do want to show borders around the cells. I'd like to allow a CSV download, not an XML download, but yes on a PDF. And I do not want to suppress the detail in this report. In my uh, pagination, I'll just use the default routine. I have no special changes. And I'm not going to put any links on the bottom of the page. So I'll click on Next, and that'll bring us to the field selection. Now in general, the field selection in O4W does look like this. Then you have a listing of all the fields in a particular table. Uh, you have areas where they're going to go, and the buttons are labeled as to each one of the areas. So clicking on the sort button will move a highlighted field into sort fields. 
uh, highlighting a field, click on the select button, moves it to selection fields, and so on. There's also remove buttons down the bottom in case you make a mistake. Well, I want to sort by state. I also want to select by state. And when I display, I want to display the customer ID, the contact. Oh, I don't want it to go there, so I made a mistake. So you click on the field you made a mistake on, and you click on remove. It's that simple. So for customer ID, I want that to go into display. Contact name, I'd like that to go into display. Uh, city as well. And control click, phone number goes over to display. And finally state and move that over to display as well. So that's what I'm going to do for my field selection. I'll click on next. And now I get to decide my sorting. I'm only sorting by one field in this report. You can see it highlighted as a statement is built first by the system. And it's on the state field and it's an ascending sort. I'm not going to make any changes there. I'll click on the next button. The selection. How am I going to select the rows for this report? Well, I'm going to do a with clause. I'm going to say with state, and I want the comparison type to be equal. Uh, and it will prompt the user to type in, and I'll type in enter state. Uh, skip if null. I'm going to change this to yes, because this way, if a user enters no states, then the report will run on all states. I'll have the response be case insensitive. Uh, as far as the multiple select and the index fields, I'm going to skip all of that for right now. Click on the next button. Click on display will bring us to the field display. So our report is effectively made up of the labels and the data that it's displayed. The labels, uh, we have the actual text that's being displayed, and we have some properties about these labels. And then the data that's displayed, the values, we can do some settings on their properties, any modifiers they want to do, and any links that we want to change on these. So for example, the customer ID label, I just wanted to read ID, and the contact name label, I just wanted to read name. Uh, the label properties, if I click on this button, and I'll get some details for this particular field. I'm going to change all the labels to match this. I want the background color to be a very light blue. I'm going to have the text color uh, appear as a very dark blue. The alignment will be centered, and I'd like it to be bold. Uh, I could also make it sortable if I wanted to, but I'm going to skip that for right now, or italic. I will save this now. And we'll see that the O4W display matches the settings that we just made. So a light blue background, dark blue, and we have our label. Looks like it's bold. Uh, and you can see that the cursor here has changed to that four-way arrow because I can make changes here. For example, if I want phone number to appear before city going left to right, I can just click on it and drag it up and make that change. So we've modified all of our labels. I've moved the order of these particular fields. I have no changes I want to make to the value of properties, but the settings are effectively the same as we saw for the other. So I'll just escape out of there. Um, then we have uh, the value modifiers, and I pretty much don't want to do any value modification except for the state field. So I'll go down to state, and I click on here, and what I would like to do is for the state, I'd like to have a break value, and for all the break values, I'd like to set a color of very pale yellow. So I'll click on save, and this is pretty much our report as it's uh, being defined for us now. I'll click on next, and I'm pretty happy with this. I will save the report, D3 cost, and I'll click there to run the report. And the first thing that's going to happen is that the system will prompt us for a state. And please recall that I uh, didn't choose that we could go if it was null, so I'll click on select. And it's telling me now that there are at least 50 rows in the results, so I should display it, and I'll say yes. And now here's the report. You can see the column headings uh, lined up like we said. The different states, it's sorted by state, and every time there's a break on the state, it displays with that light yellow background. I have buttons where I can download it as a CSV or download it as a, C as a PDF. I have pagination routines built in, so I can automatically scroll through the different pages here. Uh, that works pretty well for us. Um, and I'm pretty happy with this report. I can go back to search, because this is called a trail of breadcrumbs. If I go back to search, and I enter in the state of California, and click on select now, it's going to find six different rows. I'll display those, and I'll get just the six, and there's my break on value there. So it's fairly easy. Now if I want to go back and make changes to the report that I've already saved, uh, for example, I want to change the text to phone number, I can just close down there. I can go back to my display, and on phone number, I'll just change that text to phone. Uh, I'll go on next. I will save it here. I'll click there to run the report. Here comes the report. I'll skip it. It's going to have the 50 records. And now you'll see that the report says phone instead of phone number. 
So without doing any code, we've gotten a fairly sophisticated report that's showing us all of our customers, has page logic built into it, uh, has highlighting for the break-ons, it has download buttons available to it, we have a pretty good search routine that we didn't have to write any code for, and all of this was just, was just done by filling in a number of blanks. So that has been our introduction to using the report wizard in O4W against a D3 data source. Thank you.